Hello everyone. In this tutorial we are going to talk about lighting and rendering an environment inside Marmoset Toolbag. Uh, I've chosen this scene which I already have set up and you're gonna see something different when we go back to the viewport. This is actually the final render. Our render is probably gonna be a little bit different just because I've, I've learned stuff over the years and I want to try some different things with you guys. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So if I go into my Marble Set Toolbag, this is actually the same scene. So some people are going to be surprised and I'm just going to fix this a little bit. Okay. Uh, some people are going to be surprised and see that there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of uh, graininess in this image. And that's just because of the viewport render and that's totally okay. Uh, whenever you have a lot of reflections, a lot of effects and lights and things going on you are going to get this grain so um, one of the things we're going to talk about real quick and I'll probably talk about it later in the video but just in case you are interested in just that part um, the way that I get rid of all this noise is by increasing my samples so if I go to capture settings I you can see that I have my sampling all the way to 400 times um, that means that when rendering this scene is going to take a lot more time than just doing the usual 16 times but it will definitely get rid of the noise as you can see if I bring that image back there's actually no noise whatsoever and the reason being is because I increase the sampling for that much uh, the other way that you usually make things uh, less noisy is by going inside your renderer and making sure your voxel resolution is at high. Um, I usually keep this when I'm working, I keep this at medium just because the system bugs down. Uh, it doesn't anymore. I used to own a 980. Uh, apparently that wasn't enough for something like this. Now that I have a 1080, um, things are working much better and I no longer have lag. So if, if you're having a lot of lag in Marmoset Toolback, then it might be time for you to get a new GPU. Uh, but if not, then just lower the settings here while you're working and just increase it uh, when you're ready for rendering. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take out all the lights. I'm going to leave the camera as it is because I just like this point of view. And uh, I'm going to take away all the lights and going to reset the scene and I'll be right back. Okay, so... I have my scene reset it here. Actually, gonna uncheck all of these things just to show you how it comes by default. So this is how things would look once I place the objects on my scene. Actually, there's barely anything visible, so I'm just gonna enable GI again. Um, this is how everything is going to come in. Uh, once you bring your scene into Marmoset Toolback and you have set all set up all your materials. I've already talked about uh, setting up materials in another video, so I'll leave a link in the description below. But uh, yeah, this is how your stuff is going to look once you bring it into Marmoset Toolback. Again, I have a lot of massive stuff here. So you're actually seeing some of it uh, going around. And this is one of the things why GI is so important because uh, since I already have some light in the scene that's being produced by the emissive textures, uh, the GI is trying to pick on that. So if I turn off GI, you're only seeing the emissive textures and nothing else. But if I t turn on GI, which will turn on bouncing lighting, you're going to see instantly how my scene gets uh, not completely lit up, but uh, partially. And it, I think it does a very good job at... Um, and bouncing the lights around. Actually, this this will look for a very nice and creepy scene. Uh, anyways, but we we want to showcase our environment, so um, we need a little bit of a better lighting in this situation, and that's what I'm going to do. Um, one thing that um, Marmosa Toolbag doesn't have. Uh, hopefully, if a developer watches this, this is something that a lot. I, I know a lot of people. I'm not the only one that's claiming for this we need uh, orthographic viewports. When setting up something like this, uh, you 
it's a pain in the ass to to turn in to do it in Marmosa toolback. It's it's not uh, convenient at all. So the way that I would set up a scene like this would have to be on my 3D package. Um, sometimes I work in 3D Studio Max. Sometimes I work in Maya, uh, or you could do it in Blender, whatever 3D software you're using. Uh, set everything up in there, and then bring all the assets uh, over into Marmosa toolback. I even did the camera positioning inside 3D Studio Max just to make sure that I was getting the camera view that I needed without having to um, be playing around with, with the system here. So the other thing that I do uh, when I'm rendering environments is have a floating camera. The reason why I have a floating camera is because I like to live this view as my render view and that way I can switch to my floating camera and I can look around my scene in case I need to place a light, place something else, um, I would I will be able to do it without ruining my camera positioning uh, for the render. Okay, so now that we are here, let's start adding some light. Uh, I'm going to switch back to my render camera. One of the things I'm going to do actually is check to see if I can increase the lighting of this by just uh, playing with the emissive. So I'm going to go to the lamp in the ceiling and by just increasing the emissive all the way up, see I can light up my scene a little bit better. Um, yeah, I, I think that's good. I'm going to bring my color down to something. Uh, this is sci fi scene, so it can be very sterile, but I, ha I like to give little bit of drama to my scene so I'm just going to well not drama but you know what I mean I'm just gonna give a little bit of color to those uh, emissive uh, actually for yeah so I'll probably what I'll do is move this guy over here a little bit to the back that way you can see a little bit more of what's on the tablet as opposed to just fully reflecting on the light uh, let me see what other things can I increase these things are all the way up okay these are the lights from the sides so the beauty of this is even though I have an emissive map I can change the tint if I wanted to if I want a different tint from what I have right now I can change it and that's one of the things I like about this program. Uh, I think this is as far as it can go with let me let me see if I can just overwrite this. Oh yes, I can. Awesome. So if you are finding that you're already at 10 and you want to you want these things to have a little bit of more luminescence, uh, just type whatever number you have here. Uh, thankfully, Marmosa Toolback programmers uh, gave us that benefit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it with 20. And as you can see, a lot of bloom. Maybe 15. Okay. So those lights are not going to react much more than that. I think that's enough bloom for what we need. Uh, let me see. Long lamp. I have, I've set up the scene a, a long while ago, so I forgot what the objects are doing. I'm gonna just do. I'm gonna check this, with this, and this thing is illuminating that hallway. Actually, the stairs. So I'm going to bump it up to 15. Uh, let's see what happens if we bump up the lamp on the ceiling. Uh, wow, it actually looks cool. Let me see if I can get to 15. Uh Okay, awesome. Uh so the fact that you can play with your emissives is very very helpful. Um uh, you could do this in Unreal as well and I think you can do it in Unity, but this is a good way to start lighting your scene if you have a lot of emissives without actually having to play some lights. So Again, I think maybe 15 is too much. We're going to leave it at 13. Uh, let me see what other things we have emissive. We have this. Uh, see, here is one of the things that I I don't like to do is 
when I have something like this tablet where I already have uh, not only an emissive map but things going on on the screen if I turn up the emissive lighting over here it's going to wash out the color of my tablet and it's not going to look that good so I'll probably bump it up a little bit not too much um, let me see what happens if I change the tint if I change the tint it's going to help not by much but there you go and as you can see I do have a little bit of flare on my camera I forgot to take that out so we are going to do the just now okay I took out the flare uh, now this is looking very nice let's see about the, um, these panels over here I'm going to do the intensity uh, yeah yeah the intensity of that is good maybe bring the coloring all the way up to not completely blue but a little bit and let's see we have uh, transparency one uh, I'm sorry I'm just fixing the, the materials that I have on my scene and let's see second frame and the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm trying to get the emissives to help me with the lighting as opposed to uh, adding a bunch of lights like I had before because I, I learned a couple of things since I made this scene in the first place so that's what we're trying to fix okay uh, I forgot what that is mm, closet you see the emissive of the closets this yeah, all the way up. Back wall. I'm going to switch it. Batteries. I think batteries is... There you go. Uh, I'm going to help it with color slider here actually maybe gonna bump this to 15 there you go and when it comes to my materials I think I'm done um, oh device there you go okay so I guess I'm done messing with my materials uh, now we're actually gonna start to add some lighting so to start adding some lights I'm going to be using my floating camera and I'm going to for this scene as you can see this is um, I'm outside of my um, of my room uh, this room is not 100% sealed and even if it's sealed I would recommend anyone doing stuff in Marmosa Tobac to uh, unless you have open windows if it's com if it's an enclosed environment I would recommend to turn down the sky brightness all the way down because you're gonna be lighting this scene with your um, with very specific lighting what's the HDRI if we use the HDRI what's going to do is it's going to create some shadows and some light where it's not supposed to be having light so unless you have uh, an environment with a bunch of windows in that case I will totally recommend to use the HDRI but uh, in my personal opinion, if you're doing something like this, which is kind of sci-fi-ish, and it's completely closed, actually this environment's not supposed to have any windows, then my recommendation is just for you to turn off um, the whole a HDRI. So we're not going to use the, um, the sky. Actually, don't, don't turn it off, because if you... Let me see. Okay, so if you turn on the sky, sorry, this is something that I just figured out, and eh, it's nice that happened in video. So if I turn on my sky, even though I have my brightness all the way down, uh, as you can see, it's affecting the lighting inside. But if I turn it completely off by making this little eye go away, 
my scene is going to be completely lit but by what's around so I'm actually gonna go with that because I don't need my sky at all I don't need any reflections of coloring from the sky so I'm just gonna take it off that's actually a very good idea and th that's actually why I like to do these videos sometimes you run into new stuff that's gonna help you a lot so that means that I can bump this down to 10 and we should be doing perfectly fine okay and as you can see by turning off my sky I can see a little bit so to correct myself from what I've said a, f a minute before if you are going to be rendering an enclosed scene I think the best approach to it is just turn off the sky because that way uh, Marmoset Toolback will take all the lighting that you have inside your environment and use that as opposed to be using the sky so even though my brightness was all the way down to zero my sky was still affecting my scene which I don't want so uh, I just uncheck it again that's just personal preference you can play with that however you want but that's just me okay awesome that means I can bump this down and I'm already at the 13 minute mark with this part so I'm actually gonna stop the video here and leave this as a general um, tutorial of lighting without using the sky and using just emissive lighting and I'm going to go into the actual lighting in another video because I, I don't want you guys to be bored so um, stay tuned for the next part